Praise God. You know, and one of the testimonies that the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody like Deacon can tell that truly in the life of some people, God the word of God works. You know, son, it is with so much joy in my heart this evening that I want us to celebrate. Please hold on. Let me just what I have to say. Um, our man of God, not just because it's a culture that we always have to honor him anytime we have a platform like this or anytime we have the opportunity to, but because genuinely and truly, this man is a man of faith. Yes. And I want to say publicly today that I know that God uses that man. So I'm a testimony of that same testimony yes. that God uses men to change other men. Hallelujah. You know, and I want to bless God for how far he has been patient with a lot of us. And I don't um, think um, it's just worthy to be said privately. I think such things are also super meant to be said publicly on an exalted altar like this one to say that if you need a reason to believe that God uses men of God, see me as another reason that God truly, truly uses men of God. You know? So if your hands are not too busy, please help me stand up in absence and please celebrate my man of God, Reverend Alexander Farnotobi. Because I love you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please, let's have our seats. Let us say a prayer together, people of God. Can we bow our heads, people of God? Father, we pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you touch every heart in this room in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray, Lord, upon this grace that I stand this evening, Lord, that you will use your word to touch lives in the name of Jesus, Amen. that every heart of clay here will be met with your word in the name of Jesus, Amen. and the wisdom in your, in, in, in your word will change every life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers. And Lord, to the speaker, Lord, help me, Lord, to convey your thoughts accordingly in the name of Jesus, Amen. that everyone will hear you and not me in the name of Jesus, Amen. more of you and less of me, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Amen. for in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Somebody celebrate Jesus one more time. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Woo! How's your day? Good evening. Welcome to church. How has your day been? Get responses from them now. Get feedbacks from them. Ask them. Hallelujah. Dickie, how was your day, sir? Wait on, sir. You know, I spent, I spent the first, uh, praise God, praise God. I spent the next, um, I spent about two minutes walking into church and I saw a lot of my brothers and sisters in feet laughing at my hair, you know. And uh, I don't take that laugh for granted, although <laughs> I can tell that some of you, you have been praying that one day MD will finally go and meet his brothers because those ones are already bad. Eh? But my testimony with this prayer, with this message that I have to share with us today, is that by the end of this year, my hair will grow back. <laughs> Praise God. And my testimony will be that I'm not the bad one. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of you, you see, didn't get the joke. Well, no problem. Let's move on. All right, so this evening, I want to just um, share with us briefly from the teachings of our man of God. And I'm uh, making reference to this with so much honor in my heart to just. Um, Remind us, real quick, what we have been teaching so far in the month of February, and to just share some things that I've also gotten from the messages he has taught us so far, and I feel so, so honored once again to be the one to share the word of God with us this evening, and I don't take it for granted. Thank you, Bishop, sir. Thank you, Mama. I celebrate you one more time. Um, the message this evening is, don't blame darkness, blame light. I'll say that again. Don't blame darkness. Blame light. At the end of this teaching, there are about four things I want us to take home, and I'm going to just share with us so that um, if I'm able to cover it up, you will still get to understand where I'm starting from and where I'm going to. All right? So there are four things I want to let us take home, basically, at the end of this teaching. And uh, number one is that by the end of this teaching, we should have been able to learn the areas where we should shine our light more. Amen. Amen. So let me just read out to us so that you write it down and then begin to follow me as I walk through it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost for a short, short moment. If you have a praying tongue, please 
go ahead and um, do that. Go ahead and do that. Come on, come on. All right. Ooh. For in Jesus' name, we are free. Amen. So, for things I said I'm going to mention was that at the end of this teaching, I want us to have been able to understand and know where we should shine our light the more and more confidently. Number one, our emotional life. And number two, our social life. Number three, ministry life. And number four, productivity. I'll take it again. Number one, emotional life. Number two, social life. Number three, ministry life. Number four, productivity. Praise God. So, as Christians, if we are done, um, okay, media, you help me, but before then, as Christians, I realize that we have a knowledge that we all work with. This knowledge has been with us. Most people who have been, maybe probably were born Christians or were maybe con uh, converted or had to Peculiar what? Yes. That we are a royal priesthood, we are a holy nation. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Now, we have been told this thing several times. And a lot of times we still find a way around it because we still hear this particular scripture in First Peter chapter chapter 2, verse 9. You know, we hear it a lot of times that we are a real priesthood, we are a holy nation, we are people called out um, to, uh, to become kings, you know, out of darkness into light. We are, we, are, we, are, we are kings, we are queens, we are, you know, we are royalty, we are, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are here potential. Then I realized in my little time I spent on earth that with all of these things that God has told us in his word that we have been prepared by prophecy, we have been called out for this, we have been called out for that, I realized that most Christians, at, even at this point, after hearing this word severally, are still not living to their full potential. So I began to ask myself a question when I got the um, um, I was going to say invite. <laughs> when I got the, <laughs> when I got the um, rosa that I was going to, um, I'm privileged to go to gospel this evening, and I realized that one of the reasons that why people or a lot of people as Christians are not living to this full potential are almost in two places. Is that I realized that people who are not aware or self-conscious of what God is, God has told them or in his words, or maybe through a prophet or through a pastor, they are not aware of this consciousness. Some are aware, but timid. I hope you are following me, please. Some are aware, but timid. Some are aware, but laid back. Some are aware, but greatness is not, is not a thing like that. You know, then I begin to ask myself, if after all of these things, what is making us go this deep into Christianity, understanding God's word, and not living to our fullest potentials as a, priest, as a priest, as a king, for instance, as an ambassador, as a king, as uh, somebody who has been called out, a chosen generation, you know. And I began to ask myself all of these questions. Then I realized that such potentials can be like maybe um, um, being like, uh, maybe like a solution provider or an agent of change, a change agent. You know, Pastor Bishop will always tell us that you should be a solution. You are the needed, not the needy. Bishop C tells us with several words. He finds several things to tell us. Stand up. You are bigger than this. There is much more to achieve. You are this. Yet people, after all this while, are still not accomplishing that particular uh, class or things that comes with all of this paraphernalia or encomium or, what's, or how do I call it now, or the cliches that comes with being a Christian in God's plan. You know? Then I realized one more time that 
this potential most of the time would not manifest in most Christians. Not because they are not saved already. Not because they are not being redeemed. Amen. Not because they, are not, um, they, are not, they don't have the life of Christ or they don't have the mind of Christ in us. But that they are not first aware. Some are not courageous. Some don't have greatness in them. So let's go back to this scripture. Um, uh, First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 and then 2 Corinthians 5.20. So you will realize that it is really not God's fault. Yes, it is not God's fault that we are not living to our fullest potential. There's a song by Elevation Worship that says that I will never be more loved than I am right now. It means everything God wants to do for you, he has done. And then I heard one of his messages that he says that you are the only person left in God's agenda. Mm. And I began to ask myself, that means the university you will go to has been built. The teachers that will teach you have been trained. The clothes you will buy, you didn't get to the market before they made it, except for outfits like, that will go like this. You don't, uh, the cars you will buy, they are not just making it, except you want, you want a custom made. So you are probably the, the country you want to go to. The wife you want to marry has been given birth to. I hope you what I'm saying, guys. It means that we already have a plan to walk into when we begin to walk into our potential. There is already a structure. There's a path. There's a terrain we should go. You know, the other way Mr. Mr. Fe, um, Rafael was talking about the places that are passed on the head. Is it true? There's already a plan designed for us to go through. There are ways we should walk into. There are things we should begin to do that if we, if we don't begin to do them, it's not God's fault. So can we first establish, first of all, that with this scripture in First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that says, Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. My basic emphasis is one, a chosen generation. Two, a royal priesthood. Three, a holy nation. Four, a peculiar people. Please go to um, 1 Corinthians 5.20. Let's see what that says. Just the first, the B part just says 1 Corinthians 5.20. If we have it. Choosing generation, we are priesthood, or holy nation. 5.20, please. Not 5.13. 5.20. 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 5.20, sorry. 2 Corinthians 5.20. This one clearly says... Ye are ambassadors for Christ. So really and truly, it all the scriptures just establishes the fact that in everything that concerns God, there's no smallness in it. We all know what ambassadors do. We all know that they go from country to country to represent the nation, they help uh, the, fol- the foreign policies of this country, you know, the priests in this country, the, 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 the work. Out. So they are special people. In fact, they even call them special envoys sometimes. Emissaries, diplomats, you know, all these names, are, it doesn't suggest anything that is small at all. So, with these scriptures, can we now accept and accept it that God's word cannot fail? Can you respond back to me, please? Yes, can we now also agree that in this house that we have been taught that we should judge God faithful? It means that God's word cannot fail. Amen. In that, in that same light, can you say a big amen, please? Amen. Do you also believe that God's word has the capacity to change things? Do you also believe that God's word does not fall on the ground without bringing the fruit? Yeah. So if we agree all of these things, that means we can exempt God from the reason why we are not living our full potential. Yeah. Are you with me on that? Yes, sir. Very good. So... Now, Bishop said something very profound, and also just share with us. He said that, yes, I'll, I'll come back to you. Let them put it. I'll come back to it. Bishop always says that um, the Christianity that exempts, let me check that again. Bishop has told us that Christianity that puts all responsibility on divinity is irresponsible. I hope you understand. So, if God has a plan for you, what this is trying to tell us is that we have a role to play all by ourselves. That is to how much degree we can be that God will give to you. Mm-hmm. It's how much degree you can take that God will give to you. So, for instance, you have people that their, their account numbers cannot take as much. Maybe why? Because maybe it's a student account. Maybe they don't have a valid passport, I mean, a valid identification card or something, you know. All of these things together is just pointing to the fact that God is not the reason why you are not at the biggest 
or at the strongest or at the highest or the topmost part of your career or anything that consigns your fulfillment. I hope you understand. So we can take God out of this, this conversation because we already know that his word cannot fail. His word will not fall on the ground without bringing the fruit he has been sent to do. And God's word has the capacity to change things. Amen. So if we have... That means there's a lot of role. There's a lot of things we have to achieve. I mean, there's a lot of things we need to do to achieve what God has said in his word for us to achieve. So I go by saying that we should check this scripture in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. Very popular scriptures too. I would like us to read it in NKJV. Matthew 14 to 16. Do we have it? Good. Praise God. He said, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set up on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and it's given light unto all that are in the house. What does 16 say? It says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. I get to say that most of us as Christians are not making God take the glory, full glory, in our different walks of lives, in our businesses, in our offices, and in our lives as a whole. I stand to be corrected. I have a pastor that will correct me. Amen. So this is just let us know that the light we have, the light we carry, is not for ourselves, basically. It's just like a fruit. I mean, like a tree, rather. So if a tree bears fruit, the tree doesn't eat back its fruit. It's for people. Mm. So it's almost saying that if we know that we have light in us, then we should be bold and confident to shine this light forth to people. All right? So that, that other scripture too in Psalm chapter 18, verse 28. Psalm 18, verse 28. It talks about light that God would um, um, enlighten our darkness. It will bring us, see, Psalm 18, verse 28 says, For thou will light my candle, and the Lord, my God, will enlighten my darkness. Amen. You know? So that means we already have light. There's a lot of light already that comes with us. Let's now go to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. So that I can go to the body of this conversation. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Very, very popular scriptures again. It says, Go ye, therefore. And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There's a, there's a, there's a translation that says, Go ye and make disciples, teaching this, that. Go and make, become the peace setter, become the person that sets the tone, become the person that tells people how it's being done, become the person that shows others the way. It has a definition of leaders, leaders that says that leader is someone who knows the way and shows the way. Yes, so if you want to disciple people really and truly, it means that you must have been properly discipled. Then you can show people how the way, I mean, how to go in the way. I hope you are with me, everyone. Yes, all right, so all of these scriptures now is the fact that if you have light, if you are light, if God has called you out to be light, if God has called you out to be this, he has, he's now telling you now to go into the world and shine forth that light. Amen. It's not saying that at that office, when you see anything that is not going right, for when you see darkness, it talks about confusion. It said, don't blame light. Don't blame darkness. Blame light. If you see something that is not going well in your family, don't blame darkness. Blame light. You know, if you see something that's not going well in the nation, don't blame darkness. They are doing their job. Don't blame darkness for covering up a place. Darkness is doing its job. What we should blame is light. Because light is refusing to shine. Mm. So, for instance, if there's darkness in this room now, there's no reason why darkness will stay if light comes. Yes. Yes, sir. So, when I saw a post that talks about when young people are um, occupied with um, extracurricular activities that does not um, uh, generate righteousness or make them productive and all of that, somebody says that don't attack those boys. Give them what is productive. So, don't go telling them that you are a bad boy. Don't go telling them that your life has sports. Don't go telling them that you don't know what you are doing in life. No. Just give them what will make them productive and light will shine on them. I hope you understand. So we don't need to fight light in that sense. What you need to do is to introduce... I mean, we don't need to fight darkness, rather. What we need to do is to introduce light. 
So the presence of light in these cells makes darkness run far, 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 far. There's a particular um, example that Bishop always uses, that story of light and darkness, that, that darkness always brags that uh, when light comes, when uh, Iman light, they will fight, this one. But when that light comes, they don't find darkness. What is that? Asap, asap, what is law? What is law? Far, far, far. What is law? You know? <laughs> You know, so what that means is that I don't know if I should say this is that darkness is not the problem, but light refusing to shine is the problem. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, the creation story tells us clearly that when God came, He did not argue with confusion. Mm-hmm. When God came, He didn't argue with things that were not working. What He brought, what He introduced, was light, and then we now saw God's power over and around. So it means that when you want to see other things manifest, you don't need to shout with light. Mm. You don't need, I mean, with darkness. You don't need to drag. You don't, you don't need to test or conquest with darkness. All you have to just do is introduce enough light. If we have enough light in this, more, more than enough light in this room, this room will be more lit than this. I hope you understand. Yes. It's a thing called floodlight. If we put it in this room now, we might all probably just walk out of this place. So there's a mix of light that takes away any type of darkness. Yeah. There is a class of light that makes darkness run far, 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 far. That light is what we carry. Mm. And we are still not living to the full potential. So who is to be blamed? Light. So we all have to be blamed. If there is anything we are seeing in the nation, in that field where you work, wherever you are doing uh, maybe your own work, your career, your business, anything you are doing, if you are seeing lots is that I cannot blame this darkness. I have to blame myself that is light. Because we are refusing to shine to the fullest of the capacity that we are supposed to shine. If we shine in that capacity, that darkness will move away. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can we just pray and say, Father, help me tonight, Lord, to receive the capacity to walk in full light in the name of Jesus. Are you praying with me? Are you praying with me? In the name of Jesus. Rapako shati kapata pakata. Irako shete peke te peke te peke te peke te peke te peke te peke. Rapaka ta pakasha pa. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. So this scripture says, "Go ye and make disciples." But how can we make disciples when we were supposed to be the disciples? All we do is to complain. All we do is to allow the systems of the world dictate to us how joyful we should be because the Lord has risen or the Lord has fallen. How do we set the pace for people when we were supposed to be the light? We are supposed to be the light, but not maximizing our full potential. It means that there is no way things are going to eventually turn the way we want them to turn if we don't get to use our potential to the fullest. We need Christians in every sphere of life to be doing great things. People who God's mind are in them to teach, to preach, to use wisdom, to use God's power, to forecast, to prognosticate. What future? So, for instance, imagine that we can tell before now when this heat wave came, told them in the Ministry of Environment that the time will come after maybe January, when that heat wave started. This. When? Early this month, yes. As also, so time of, this, of the year, heat wave will come. These are the things we're supposed to do to make sure this, that this heat wave does not overwhelm Nigerians. Please, how do you think such a person would perceive? Think about it. Don't respond. Just think about it. This is the same thing that happens if we are able to really, really shine our light in every area that we find ourselves. Music, art, football, sports development, healthcare. So at the point where you know that you are light and you are using your light effectively, people will be forced to come and ask you, where are you getting your wisdom from? And by then you can begin to disciple them and say, come, this is the way. But it's not because you are not shining your light appropriately. And then God is telling us that if you are still waiting for me, you are wrong. He has given us all that we need for life and godliness. So why are we still not living up to the full potentials as Christians that we are? So this is a call to just challenge us. Not to really, really, really um, um, go elaborate on this. Just challenge us that we need to be a light in the field that we find ourselves. And ensure that until our light compels others to begin to give glory to God. Like I said earlier, that God is not even taking the glory as much in our lives. It's because we're not working in our full potentials as Christians. And by this point, we begin to realize that there's a lot more that we need to rise up to. 
So the topic of this year really points out to us and say that, that there's much more for us to achieve. So this is a call to just challenge everyone in this room and myself that in case you think you have done enough, you are just getting started. Yes, sir. Recently, Bishop was telling me that, what have you done for you to be tired? I took that as a fatherly correction, an advice. I mean, a correction, an instruction, safe. That you can't at this point, if you truly want greatness, be, be, I mean, be, 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 be shaken by small things. Because what is really true to come, if you want it to come, you must be strong for it. It means that you need to develop more and more capacity. I was telling one of my sisters, I think about three weeks ago, you are not married or you are already complaining that uh, you don't have power for this, you don't have strength for this. I said, husband, we come. <laughs> it's all like Aaron, we come. Amen. 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 Another one like Elsa, we come. <laughs> powerful, powerful children. You know? When God blesses us with some things sometimes, we probably think that all we have to do is to just enjoy the blessing that comes. There's work that comes with blessing. There's a lot of husband we come. How do you know that the type of woman you want to marry is the one that will carry you and travel around the world? 25 countries in one, in, one, in one month. You don't know. So I was trying to say that to just encourage her to say, if you really want to become as great as the Bible and God's word has said you'll be great, there's a lot of work you need to do. There's a lot of strength you need to begin to acquire from now. So I took that in and I told myself, I said, I will not go to. <laughs> For the, for the, please forget, don't mind our local palace. What that really means is that I will not give it into. Um, <laughs> and I will not give into. You know, I will not give into um, things that want to take your eyes off the goal. You know? So, going into the world to make disciples is just really to tell us that you that will go into the world will not yield to, comp will not yield to complaining. Amen. You that will go into the world to set disciples will not yield into uh, small, 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 small distractions. You know, praise God. Hallelujah. So, instead of shining our light, some of us will just join the world. We join others. And Bishop books always say that there's a Christian way to respond to things. There's a Christian pattern. There's a Christian dimension to see everything. There's a view of a Christian that we need to begin to have. Hallelujah. So, let's go forward. So Genesis chapter 1, verse um, 1 to 5, we just understand that, that complaint is to darkness what light is to right words. I'll take that again. Complain is to darkness what light is to right words. Yeah. That's Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. The story of creation, the creation story. When God uh, saw darkness and then he spoke into it and then light came and everywhere... You know, and uh, it was from that same light, it was able to divide the type of light, some uh, moon, some uh, sun, stars, and then day and night. You know, it was able to separate it and put firmaments and put time into all of these things. So this story makes us understand clearly that complaint is to darkness. What light is to right words? No wonder in Job chapter 6, verse 25 says, how possible are right words? So when darkness fills up a place, introduce light. Don't blame darkness. Blame light. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So tell your neighbor, quit complaining. Quit complaining. Anywhere you find darkness, can you say after me? Anywhere you find darkness, blame light. I mean, introduce light, rather. Introduce light. Thank you. So I want to just encourage us to quit complaining as people, as a church. Quit complaining as a nation. If you are aware that complaint does not change anything, thing, why do we still do it? You know, and this thing called complaining is a subtle signal that goes to the realm of the spirit to tell them that somebody has misguided somewhere. Oh, yeah. And I will explain how that works. You know, Bishop always tells us that the realm of the spirit is an open place. Yes, sir. And the spirit knows what to do. They, they, they can navigate and all of that. They know who is already in the path of their falling line. Mm. They know who, has, who is not focused, who is not shining, who is not holding on his light anymore. They know who is sleeping. They know who is out of way. They know who has stopped, who has paused to begin to let the news of the world overwhelm them. They know. So they're going to say, eh. So once they find
persecuted by himself. That's a big lie. That's a big fat lie. And I'll show you the scripture here. Bishop will see you lie. You lie, liar, liar. You lie. Because really and truly, there's a scripture in John chapter 1, verse 3. John chapter 1, verse 3. That says, John chapter 1, verse 3. Okay. That all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Can we, can we read that again, people of God? Can we echo it one more time? One, two, three, go. All, All things were made by him, and without him, nothing anyone made that was made. Praise God. <laughs> hey. So the devil will make us feel that he created some things by himself. That's a very, 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 very big lie. You know? That song by Moses Bliss that you see that, um, uh, uh, how, what's that song called again? Um, I, I look above the systems of the world. I totally rely on your word. No matter what may comes my way, no matter what I say, is it's you, 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 you know. Sinat also said that we are a chosen generation, call for to show his excellence. That last, that line, call for to show his excellence. So I, I just have to remind us these songs to point us to the fact that God has called us great. By many, many examples. Yes, you know, so back to where I was, um, I was taking us to that. The devil has made us believe in this generation that there are some things that he created. Or that there are some things that he made. No. For instance, devil did not create sex. Devil did not create music. Devil didn't create fashion. Devil did not create uh, furnitures. He didn't create interior, interior decor. He didn't create health care. He didn't create uh, biological science. He didn't create all of that. Boy, it's perfect for his own personal use. Yes. The devil is strong in his business that he knows what to pervert or which ones to use mm. to make us feel that we that are uh, heads of the father don't now feel qualified to reign or dominate in that field. Mm. That's what he has made us feel. So sometimes when you hear people talk about music and they say, ah, hey, ah, please leave it for unbelievers. You hear government, you say, leave it for unbelievers. <laughs> devil did not create that. Devil is just using that because he's cunning in his ways to fulfill his own agenda of to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And he will use any means to achieve that purpose, that, put that particular goal. So it is that he has made us believe like that. Then we now begin to withdraw and say, ah, when you hear politics, they say politics is for, is for, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a dirty game. When you hear governance, they say it's a dirty game. When you hear music, they say, ah, don't go there. Those those, uh, 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 there's a name they even call, they used to call them. Worldly music. And they say, well, there's a name my mom used to call them. They, they, you know? And you say all of that to just make us feel that where we should be reigning is inside the church. No! The world is where we should be reigning, sir. The world is where we should be reigning, man. And if you don't know these things on time, and as young Christians begin to take this charge and they begin to work at it, we we'll actually believe that everything that the world needs or that they are actually doing. It's just for them. No. It is when we get into the field, first of all, we have to know, we have to accept that we can dominate and rule in that same field. Yes, then, we now begin to help them and see this is not how it's being done. This is how it's being done. So, I'll just um, go forward to this, this particular scripture. You know, the devil will, will just use his structure. You would think that we just probably think that maybe the devil is the one that, that made families. He didn't make families. He didn't make families. But he can pervert it. He can pervert everything to himself for his own good, for his own use. Don't allow him. Sir. Yes, sir. We should not allow him, man. Yes, Praise sir. God. So Romans 8, Romans 8, verse 16 and 17 says, The Spirit bear witness with our gift that we are children of God. Yes, sir. Then Psalms 24, verse 1 now says that the earth is the Lord and his fullness thereof. That means that if your father, if our father is the landlord of the earth, mm. that means there's no field that we cannot operate in. Mm. There's no field we cannot su su succeed in. Praise God. Hallelujah. So can you tell your neighbor this evening and say, I will shine without boundaries. I will shine without boundaries. And I will shine my light without limits. I will shine my light without limits. Praise God. So for one of, one of God, there are three things I want to share with us that has stopped a lot of Christians from reaching their potential. And I want us to just write it down. Take a note and just um, write it down. Number one is, so I, I titled that part, subtitled that part as three things that does not make Christians to shine their light appropriately. 
three things that doesn't make Christians shine their lights bright. Number one, little or no appetite for greatness. Number one, little or no appetite for greatness. The number two, courage or guts. And number three is what I call lack of awareness of power. Not lack of power now, lack of awareness of power. So I say three things that does not make Christians to shine their light brightly. So I say number one is little or no appetite for greatness. Can you read that from number two? Courage. Courage or God. The number three now says lack of awareness of power. Praise God. So this number one says little or no appetite for greatness. Not everyone is hungry enough for greatness, sir. Not everyone is, 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 has, a, or has a strong appetite for doing well or for excelling or to be an eye flyer or to set a goal and achieve it. Not everyone has that such capacity, you know? And um, Bishop has told us that even the scripture, as much as you can bear, is a scripture that tends to both what you, what you can handle and what you cannot handle. I hope you understand. So if God is saying as much as you can bear, it means that it is for good and also for not too good. So God will not give you a, a problem, for instance, that is bigger than you, than your size. He will so also not give you what is bigger than your capacity to handle as a blessing. Yes, sir. You know, because he has a way of measuring our hearts. He sees our hearts to know, okay, this one can handle this part time. Mm -hmm. Because he, he doesn't want us to enter into destruction. <laughs> so really, really and truly, when you hear a statement, uh, the scripture that says that God is more than you can bear, he's talking about both ways. Mm -hmm. So don't think it's just for... Um, what you can be uh, maybe problem no 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 no. it's also to what is good so it will not give you an amount of money mm. that will not to stop seeing you in church you know the other day we were joking i don't want us to see it some of my brothers in faith they are they took. there was a figure we called and we're not saying that it's just a, let me not say that but god will help us amen so, because God told Abraham at some point, he said, look, when, when Lot left him, he said, look as far as your eyes can see, I will give you. Look to the north, look to the east. He said, look around you, as far as your eyes can see. So, God is asking you now, if you really want to shine your light, he's asking you. Because that's one of the reasons why so many people are actually not arising to the, to the uh, uh, demand of being a great person or shining their light appropriately. Is that God is asking you, how much do you want? How hungry are you for greatness? In that field, in that industry, in that line, in that walk of life, how hungry are you? Do you, do you ever see yourself one day owning that same thing you are working right now? Do you ever see yourself doing as much as your boss is doing right now? Do you have the time to go on it? You know? So what this number one is saying is that as much as you can bear and as far as your eyes can see is what God is willing to give to you. Yes, sir. So our appetite for greatness must be gingered. Must be, must be encouraged, must be, must be spoken to, yes, must be punched, must be, or got, be driven, you know? So number two that I want us to look at is lack of awareness of power. Most Christians, not because they don't know that they have power, but they are not aware of the type of power that's from them. That scripture in Luke chapter 10, verse 9 says, Behold, I, will give, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know, there is power available, sir. Tell your neighbor, there is power available for you. There is power available for me. There is power available for me. This power, the awareness of this power alone will make you understand that there is nothing strong enough to harm you. Yes, sir. So most, of, most of our movies have done a lot of havoc yes, by making us believe yes, that it takes a longer time for God's power to work than the enemy's power. Most of them, when they want to now show God's power, it's at for seven minutes. Ah, yes. In a two hours movie. So they have done more havoc to our system by realizing a lot that the devil can do, more than showing us what God, God's power can do. So when you hear Bishop say something like this to leaders in church, that we shouldn't talk about our emotions, that we preach about God's word. In fact, don't even talk about the devil's capacity. Because there's so much to talk about. God's awareness, God's capacity that we have not even exhausted to now begin to look at what the enemy can do. That's not our business. Like I said, if there's anything wrong in our lives, don't blame darkness. Blame light. Yes, 
So we can't be talking about how much uh, the devil has power over how big, how strong, how powerful my God's power is. Yes, and I know I serve a God that does great things. Yes, yes, Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So the last part is God's. God's. Courage. What I call courage. So I said something. I said your passion is waiting for your courage to catch up. Your passion is patiently waiting for your courage to catch up. Your passion, that thing, you want, that interest that you have in that thing to do, is just patiently waiting that. When will this man rise up? When will this JT rise up? When will this daddy rise up? When will this Larry rise up? When will Mr. Gospel rise up? When will Shizzy rise up? That's what he's saying. So our person is just waiting. I have this gift though. Or guy, I have this thing. I'm able to face people shamelessly and go out. I'm waiting. Most things and things that we have not done right now. It's not a function in fact that that thing will not work. Mm -hmm. It's that we're So your courage really and truly is waiting for you, right? To begin to want to shine your light in every field. That you are walking in. Yes, One person I like so much in this house is Dr. Bai. He's very dear. Also, Mr. Shedra. Shedra can talk to anybody and he can be sharing his vision on the street. <laughs> now, let me, tell, let me tell you, in case you think that's a, that's a bad thing, we need that to actually achieve purpose. Yes, sir. Because in the just concluded uh, International Men's Conference that women had over the weekend on Woo! Thursday, <laughs> men, we should clap now, celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Bishop said something, I'm wrapping up. Bishop said something to one, one brother, asked a question. He said, the brother asked him, he said, how much is too much to advertise your business? How much is too much to, to, to market what you are selling? Ah. And Bishop said, it's to the degree of your own girl. It is to how much profit you want to make. So if a company as big as a brand as Coca-Cola is still doing adverts, yes, <laughs> what about have you done? Yeah. Till now, there are some situations that you will check. You will see Coca Cola advert everywhere. Yes, sir. In 2024, a product that they said that if you go to any country and you can't find it, don't live there. I don't know if you understand. Yes, a name as big as a name that you can put on Google to say most popular names of the year, brand of the year. Since ages past, Coca Cola has been very popular. They are still doing adverts. So how much more you, who maybe only 300 people know you on your own, what are you doing? So I just said three things basically to say there are things that really stop Christians from fulfilling their aim in life or to shine in their life, I mean, they are shining their light appropriately is that number one, lack of awareness of power. Number two, courage. And number number okay, I just just no, in no particular order. Let me take it again. That, that particular order. So number one, I said little or no appetite for greatness. Number two, courage. Yes. And number three, he said lack of awareness of power. So to wrap it up all up, there's there are four particular areas that we need to begin to shine our light going forward. That I share with us when I started this teaching. That by the end of the teaching, you should be able to have these things as areas that you, you should begin to uh, desire to shine your light much more in. So that after now, we can begin to walk into a year of much more. Praise yes, God. Sir. So let's look at the first one. It says emotional life. Number one, emotional life. So emotional life says that in dating, you must be able to rise up to the occasion to ask that lady out. Yay. Sisters, to position yourself to be asked out. It's not me now. It's from teachings. Don't, don't think I'm the one who's trying to <laughs> bamboozle your head. No, 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 no. If you listen to Bishop long enough, you know what I'm saying that it's from him. You know? So, he says that you should be that courageous, but be ethical about it. Amen. If you want to shine your light, go and shine your light. Ask that sister out. You would be surprised that it's just a step of boldness she's waiting for. They are not even as courageous as you think that, as bold as they would think they are. Yes, yeah, I'm married. I can wow, tell you. Glory. They are not that. Oh, love. <laughs> Praise God. <Hallelujah. laughs> Number two, <laughs> social life. Okay. Number two, social, social life. Bishop will say that if you are timid, you are missing out. Social life. If you are timid, you are missing out. 
Then number three says, the ministry that says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Can we complete it? That's number three. It said ministry. For, so for ministry areas that we should, we should plan to shine our light, it's also in ministry. Okay? It says that, I'm not, I'm, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And number four. Is he on the screen? Oh, okay. Then number four, productivity. In our productive life, there's one thing we should face squarely so that we can be able to shine our lives in anything we find our hands to do. And that is making sure that we are shameless in our productivity as a person. Anything we have to do, make sure that you take the element of shame away. Because shame was the frequent to man when he was following gardens. You know, and Bishop has said in one of his teachings that we need that particular state of nakedness to be able to achieve what God has told us. That means you are not shy of what you wear. You are not looking at yourself and maybe my head is not straight. Maybe my leg is not straight. That's not your business. You must be shameless in your productivity so that you can shine your light. If not, we are supposed to speak in courage of power. You'll be shamed if you speak. And then your helpers will pass you by. So you don't need to put up shame or, or, or something that will not make you productive in your productive life. This is one thing that I want us to at. And let me share this one that says that either through productivity or hunger, shamelessness will catch up with you. So it's better you throw away shamelessness by productivity. Following yourself up to say, I will make sure that what I want to achieve, I will achieve it. Or hunger will come and that shame will meet you there. Which one is now better, people of God? Choose the shamelessness that you will choose to throw away in productivity, and God will help us. My conclusion tonight is found in the book of is found in the book of um, Romans chapter eight, verse nineteen. Romans chapter eight, verse nineteen. Please, media. Romans chapter eight, verse nineteen. It says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestations of the what? The sons of God. This one here is for everybody. For yes, sir. Those who yeah. don't think it's just talking to Dickin and, uh, and Dr. Bio. Mm-hmm. It's saying that the, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited, waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. People of God, the world has waited enough for us. Mm. Yeah. The world has waited enough there's a version of you that is fit for that role. A version of you that is fit for that job. There's a version of you that is fit for that particular line. There's a version of you that is fit for everything you are looking at now that somebody else is doing. There's a version of you that is fit for governance. There's a part of you that is fit for politics, fit for music, fit for, fit for interior decor. And which day will you rise to it? So my challenge to us tonight is to say, people of God, the world is waiting for the earnest infestation of those who are called the sons and the daughters of God. Hallelujah. So please be encouraged on this note to shine your light in these areas that I've listed out to us and make it a duty that you imbibe everything possible to make sure that your light is not put out by your emotions, by your social life, by your productivity, and your make sure that you stand at it and the mighty God in heaven will help us from that light that he has given us and to become. Amen. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.